والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد ومولانا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وأتباعه ومن والاه سلم تسليما كثيرا إلى الدين عن أمير المؤمنين عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل مرء ما نوى ومن كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها وامرأة ينكفها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه رواه البخاري ومسلم هذا الحديث فيه من العلوم ما لم يحط به العلماء فالعلماء شرحوا وبينوا وأوضحوا وبقي الكثير لم يطلعوا عليه وهذا من خصائص أحاديث جوامع الكلم لا تكون قليلة الألفاظ كثيرة المعاني وهذا الحديث من أمهات الفقه التي يرجع إليها الفقه قال بعض العلماء إن فيه ثلث لعلم وبعضهم يقول أنه يحتوي على النصف بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Shaykh began praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations upon the noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he started to quote a hadith that is related by the prince or leader of the believers our master Umar Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu who narrates that he heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as saying that actions are by their intentions behind them that verily actions are dependent upon their intentions so whoever made hijrah or made um, immigrated for the sake of Allah and His Messenger, then his migration is for the Messenger, uh, for Allah and His Messenger. And whomever immigrated for the sake of the world or for a woman to marry, then his hijrah or his uh, migration will be for that which he migrated for, meaning that intention uh, of dunya or what have you. So Sheikh said that this hadith that is narrated by the Prophet ﷺ, is one of those hadiths that are called from the specialities of what Allah has given the noble messenger. Meaning he was given what is called Jawami al-Kalim, which is he uses a few words to speak but has an immense or incredible amount of depth in it. So much so that this hadith Shaykh said, some of the scholars say that it really comes down to, it consists of one third of all knowledge, this hadith, one third. And some said that it covers half of all knowledge. He said so much so that the scholars who wrote commentaries and looked at this hadith, they really could not exhaust its vast meanings and its application. وقد بدأ المؤلفون كتبهم بهذا الحديث تنبيها على تصحيح النيات كالإمام النووي في الأربعين وفي الأذكار وكالإمام البخاري إمام المحدثين فقد بدأوا كتبهم بهذا الحديث تنبيها على أن الإخلاص في النيات هو مفتاح الخير. And this is one reason why ulama of the past started with this hadith in their collections of hadith. They always start with this, and the reason they start with this hadith is because they are trying to rectify and also remind themselves and others of the importance of having correct intention. Such that if you do not have correct intention, then you're not going to achieve those ranks. And that's what the Sheikh said. This is why it is the key to good. The key to all good is correct intention. This is why the scholars say without intentions, your actions that you do are empty forms with no life in it. ويقول الإمام الغزالي وغيره يصلي الرجلان مستويان في الصف وبين صلاتهما ما بينهم يعني يعني هذا له مئة نية وهذا له عشرون نية وهذا لا نية له وهما يصليان مستقبلان القبلة يركعان ويسجدان ولكن مقاصدهما فرق بينهما ما بين السماء والأرض and this is why Imam al-Ghazali in speaking about this said there could be two people praying right next to each other and one person could have 
uh, 20 intentions and the person next to him could have as much as 100 intentions. Or the person praying is really praying with no intention. That it, their prayer outwardly looks the same. They're making rukun sujood and all that. But in reality, the difference between their prayers is massive depending on their intention behind it. ساجد بهيئة المتعبد لكن النية تفرق بينهم هذا مشرك وهذا مخلص لله. This why Imam Malik said that the one who prostrates to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the one who prostrates to the idol, outwardly in their form, there's no difference. Both are prostrating. They're the same. What makes the no the the one that the, the differentiation there is the intention, meaning. That the person who uh, prostrates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his intention is presence of Allah, b belief in Allah and all that, and so it differentiates him from that. So he, the Shaykh is saying, outwardly the action can look the same, but the difference could be the one worshipping Allah with intention and presence, or this person could be worshipping an idol. سانت برابرا أو خليل سان فرانسيسكو وهو أقرب للبيت من الطائف به وهذا شاهدناه أنا رأيته في ناس بجنب المسجد الحرام وهم ليس لهم أدب وناس يأتون من أمريكا في غاية الشوق والاحترام في ناس بجنب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهم لا يزورونه ويعتقدون زيارته شركا وناس هنا في أمريكا يتمنون أن يزوروا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رب ساكن بأقصى مغرب هنا أقرب للبيت والمسجد النبوي من الطائف بهم هذا بالنية شيخ حفظ الله read some lines of uh, poetry that mentions uh, about this importance of intention that it could be somebody sitting in the far west for example Santa Barbara and they are closer to Allah in his house the, he, they could be closer to the Kaaba than the, one, than the one who is uh, circumambulating the holy house meaning there could be somebody right now making tawaf around the house of Allah, but the person in Santa Barbara sitting could be closer to the Kaaba in this type of worship more than the person sitting there. Or because, because the person's intention here could be solely for the sake of Allah and yearning to do that, while the person there has no intention and perhaps he's completely heedless of what he's doing. And the Sheikh said it may be that a person may be sitting in his home uh, uh, with his family, but his heart is attached with his intentions to being with the Messenger وسلم, in the Battle of Tabuk during his time. And the Shaykh said that uh, uh, he's seen it himself that there are some people that live next to the Masjid of the Prophet وسلم, and live next to where the noble uh, blessed Prophet is buried وسلم, but they don't visit him because they think it's associating partners. Or they visit but they don't have like any etiquette on how they, uh, uh, they don't have any respect for him وسلم. yet there could be a person here sitting in the west of the west of the world but his intention is that he would be, he's visiting the Messenger of Allah and he has love and respect and he's in that presence where he's feeling himself to be visiting him it may be that he is more closer to that. وَكَمْ فَتَمَّعْ أَهْلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَهُوَ يَحُومُ حَوْلَ عَرْشَهِ كَمْ مِنْ نَاسٍ مَعَ زُوْجَاتِهِمْ وَذُرِيَاتِهِمْ وَلَكِنَّ قُلُوبَهُمْ تَحُومُ حَوْلَ الْعَرْشِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مُعَلَّقَةٌ بِالرَّحْمَانِ سُبْحَانَ وَالْجَلَالِ How many people? إِنَّهُمْ يَطُوفُونَ بِالْعَرْشِ يَطُوفُونَ how many people could be sitting with their wife and their family and, and physically they're sitting with them but their heart is attached or connected or not present with them but present with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perhaps doing tawaf around the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that their hearts are attached to that so it's in this intention of their presence. This is why the Prophet mentioned in the hadith 
that there are seven people that Allah Ta'ala will put under His uh, shade on the day on the day of judgment. They'll be under His shade a day that there's no shade except the one that Allah Ta'ala gives Him a shade. And in the seven people, the one mentioned is a man whose heart is attached or connected to the masjid. Shaykh said that the hadith didn't say he's in the masjid. He said his heart is attached to the masjid. So he doesn't need to physically be there. It's that his heart is attached to the masjid. For that reason, he's praised in the hadith. This is why intentions are the uh, the f the true foundation of all action is the intention. لكن لا بد لها من وافقة السنة. قال الإمام ابن أبي زيد القيرواني لا قول ولا فعل ولا نية إلا بموافقة السنة. لا تقبل نية ولا يقبل قول ولا فعل إلا بموافقة السنة. But at the same time, the Sheikh says that uh, you cannot just have a good intention and think that you're going to get all those rewards. But that those intentions, as the great scholar Ibn Abi Zayd al-Qayrawani mentions, that for an action to be truly blessed and accepted by Allah, it needs to be in accordance with the practice or the way of the Prophet Muhammad It needs to be in, a, in accordance and in congruence with the noble practice of the Prophet وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا قال لقد كان لكم في رسول الله إسوة حسنة لمن كان يرضي الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا and because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says whatever the noble messenger gives you صلى الله عليه وسلم take it what he gives you take it and in another verse of the Quran it says that you have in the noble messenger the best of example the best of examples. And, and, and the reason this is important is because it needs to match according to the sunnah of the noble prophet. Some people say, you know, smiling at the face of your uh, brother is a sadaqah. But he says that, that at times somebody may be smiling at somebody who is very, uh, that is doing haram and he's a corrupt person and you're smiling in their face meaning that this is not the kind of smiling that the Prophet ﷺ commanded us. It is not allowed for a person to rejoice in something that is haram. This is really helping them in their wrong action because as you smile at them they're, they're going to assume Oh, it's fine what I'm doing, so this person is happy with me, I'll keep doing what I'm doing. This is, uh, this is an invalid kind of intention to be doing this. Actually, <laughs> أما there's a, uh, the ulama have agreed that for an action to be accepted by Allah, they've all agreed that the intention needs to be there before the action, right? The intention. No. It will not be complete or perfected unless the intention is for the sake of Allah before that action. But they have differed, like in Ikhtalafu. No. And, no. and they've differed on some things like can uh, ablution or wudu be correct if oh, one didn't have the intention before. No. Yeah. There are some things that the scholars differed upon that when someone performs a good action, 
but didn't proceed with the intention that does that count or not? <laughs> yes. yeah. Is this a valid or not? In this they varied, but they have not, but they've all agreed that one needs intention before the good action and in order that this is perfected action. All of them agree, but they differed on if there's no intention before a good action, whether that action is valid and uh, of a worship. لا يشد عملنا إلا بالنية أي لا يصلح أو لا يكمل إلا بالنية وإذا وجد العمل موافقا للنية فقد حصل الإنسان على هذا العمل لكن بعد ذلك يتفاوت الناس وإنما لكل مريء ما نوع قد يوجد العمل ولكن لا يكون في غاية الكمال يعني إنما لكل مريء ما نوع يتفاوت الناس بعض ينوي القليل وبعض ينوي الأكمل وبعض ينوي الغاية وبعض ينوي نيات مختلفة وسنمثل لذلك وبعض ينوي النية فقط التي يوجد بها العمل وإنما لكل مرء ما نوى بحسب نيته For this reason the hadith mentions and everyone will get what they intended Some people intend with their action just that Some may intend multiple intentions So whatever intention they may have behind it is what the person will achieve. And, and for this reason, if somebody is deficient in his intention, then he will get rewards of deficiency. In other words, he will not um, uh, attain that. So if he has good intentions, he'll get it. And if he has bad intentions, then for that same reason, <laughs> it will be deficient of uh, perfection. فكما قال كما قال العلماء الرجلان يستويان في العمل وبين نياتهما فرق كبير على سبيل المثال من يريد أن يذهب إلى المسجد هذا كثيرا ما نفعله الكثير من الناس يريد أن يريد يقول أنه يريد أن نصلي في الجماعة والفرق بين صلاة الفذي والجماعة خمس وعشرون أو سبع وعشرون وهذا هو الغاية كان دائما هكذا يعني. هذه هذه نية فقط. هذه نية واحدة. لا تزيد على ذلك. For example, a person may intend. He is giving an example of going to the mosque. So if he goes to the masjid, his intention is, I'm going to go pray in jama'ah because it's 25 or 27 times more rewarded as the hadith mentioned. So this is his only intention. He only has this intention. So as he goes, this is what he's going to get intent reward for, just this intention. Most people are, uh, they do this. وهكذا إلى أن يصل المسجد ينوي أنه إذا جاء المسجد كما قال أحمد مولود في آداب المسجد وأقعد به ملتمسا بركة يريد بركة الحاضر هناك ففي كل مسلم بركة يريد أن يحصل على البركات من المسجد وقاصدا زيارته لأن هذا بيت الله تعالى وإذا زاره الإنسان فقد زار ربه واستحق الضيافة فإنه حق على المزوري إكرام زائره دون <تصفيق> حق على المزوري أن يكرم زواره والله تعالى هو أكرم الأكرم سيكرم الزائر متمسا بركة سكنته بركة وقاصدا عمارته تقصد عمارته بالذكر إنما يعمر مساجد الله من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة تقصد أنك تعمر هذا المسجد بالذكر والصلاة ودروس العلم إذا كنت صالحا لذلك ملتمسا بركته وقاصدا عمارته بالذكر والقرآن والصلاة بالصلاة والذكر والقرآن وتدريس العلم كثير وغير ذلك من الطاعات عمارة يعني بني تقصد 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 يعني استخدامه جزء نعم بذكر الله نعم يعني So the first example the Sheikh gave was the person as you recall who goes to the masjid and he said, this is most people, they just intend to go to the masjid to get the barakah of jama'ah or to get the reward of jama'ah. He said, but another person is going to the masjid, but he has knowledge and he understands. So he has multiple intentions. 
what is her, what are his intentions? He knows the Sheikh said as the hadith mentions that every footstep you take towards the masjid gives you rewards of yani uh, 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 It gives you uh, uh, raising of your level. Uh, for every a good uh, every step you take, you get a good deed. For every step you take, you get your sins removed. So. He's intending with these steps all the way to the masjid to get this reward. He's also in uh, need of barakah to get blessings. And he knows that uh, Muslims have barakah and the masjid has barakah. So he's going to the masjid to get general barakah and blessings. He also makes an intention to visit the house of Allah. And when you visit the house of Allah with that intention, you're, you're visiting the Lord of the house, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as you go to the masjid, you're actually visiting Allah. And in this visit of your Lord, what does the one when he's generous, you go to his house as a guest, how do you get treated? How then will the Lord of the world treat you as his guest in his house by visiting that house? So his intention is to visit the house of the of the Lord and thereby uh, you get this. He's also making intention to use this place and, and making dhikr because the masajid are places where believers are doing dhikr and he's praying salat and if he's learning or st or teaching, he's also intending to either learn or he's intending to teach knowledge. So imagine all these other intentions that he's adding. As he mentions, uh, Sidi Muhammad Mawlud, uh, he has a book on the whole etiquette of going to the mosque. <laughs> من أدبه قبل علمه قد يكون الإنسان له أخلاق وهي تفيد المسلمين بكثرة تواضع وخلق وأدب حتى دخول المسجد حكم خروجه وجلوسه هذا حكم أحكام كثيرة تفيد الحاضرين بأخلاقك وأفعالك وتعلم وتعليمك يعني تقصد أنك تفيد الناس إذا كان لك علم and also uh, Sheikh said that you are making intention to benefit others either through your character by going into the mosque and there's so much etiquette on exactly how to enter and how to leave the mosque. You're benefiting people by your, by your righteous uh, character. For example, you could be humble and someone benefit from your humbleness. You could treat people in a way that they benefit. So you're going to benefit others, either through your character or through your knowledge or through your actions that you may benefit from others or that you benefit others through those things as well. These are also intentions. <laughs> And, and, and also you're intending to increase the numbers that are attending the prayer. You know, you're increasing that number. And if you, and either you benefit or you get benefit from others. so uh, the, the sheikh said that you're also protecting your limbs from forbidden things. So by going to the mosque, you're also forbidding your limbs from doing the haram that you might do outside of the mosque. Because a mosque is a place that has an incredible rank with Allah and protection. Uh, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in your wealth and your children could be a type of diversion, a distraction by being in the mosque. You're also away from your family and the distractions that Shahawat may take you from Allah. And also the pleasures of the of the self, you know, there's pleasures of the dunya, you know, your desires, your caprice, and following those things that you want. By being in a mosque, you also protect yourself from your low base desires as well. <laughs> لا تليهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه قلوب ونفسه يجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فضله والله يرزق من شاء وإحساء وعلى سبيل المثال من يريد 
أن يتزوج يسمع من كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبه يصيبها وامرأة ينكحها فهجرته إلى ما هجر له يظن أن النكاح فقط للدنيا هذا غير الصواب هذا غير صحيح إذا كان الزواج للدنيا فهذا هجرته إلى المرأة هجرته إلى الزوج ولكن قد يكون الزواج غير ما ذكر في الحديث لذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى إذا كانت هجرتك إلى الزوج فقط والشوء هذا أنت مطرود أو بعيد من الرحمة لكن إذا كان قصدك غير ما ذكرنا فأنت داخل في خواص الصالحين أنت من خواص الصالحين وهذا تفرقه النية من تزوج للشهوة فهو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم في هجرته إلى ما هجر له هجرته إلى زوجة فقط فأعوذ بالله هذا يعني محروم لكن إذا كانت له النية الصالحة فإذا نوى أن يحفظ نفسه من الحرام فهذا صار في نية فرض واجب بلا خلاف وهو مقامه عال أراد أن يتبع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إني أخوفكم وإني كذا وإني كذا أنا قال أتزوج النساء وأكل وأشرب وأنام ما هذا ليس هو الخوف إذا أراد الإنسان أن يتبع على صلى الله عليه وسلم يحفظ نفسه من الحرام فهذا صار في طاعة وبحسب نياته كما سنذكر يكون مهلا كمن هو يصلي وكمن هو مجاهد وكمن هو مهلا في هذه المقامات التي مقامها عالي بهذا النية وهذا نعم. الإيمان كل إبادة نعم. Um, the Sheikh now mentions that uh, as we move now to the other part of this hadith that mentions whoever then goes to marry for the sake of the world and Sheikh said here the sake this hadith starts by saying that this person's migration is only to get married for the sake of this world not for the sake of Allah or the following of the Sunnah but solely for the sake of his pleasures or his desires to get married. He said, this is actually the intention that is blameworthy here. And it's an intention that the person will be far from Allah and he's also deprived having this intention. But at the same time, it's not saying that the person who gets married uh, is anything bad because if you're intending through marriage, to follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu to earn the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because a marriage also he could be intending to protect his uh, uh, himself and his private parts from haram then this is a high degree this is a high degree that is praised because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one hadith amongst other things he mentioned he said I marry I'm not you know it's not Ana the way uh, yeah, Ana yeah. No, no. No. he says I, I am the most uh, uh, fear, fearful of you and but he marries and the Sheikh said when you have these correct intentions and you get married, it actually becomes an act of worship like all the other acts of worship, that it is a very high degree. Getting married, uh, uh, you know, having children, following the sunnah, it's a ta'a, it's an obedience. Uh, you're protecting yourself from haram. So the, the, it's not necessarily saying getting married just for the sake of marriage, but this is the difference in the two intentions. ويكون زواجه عبادة كاملة ليس فيها شيء للشيطان مطلقا لذلك يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إنك لن تنفق نفقة تريد بها وجه الله تعالى إلا أجرت عليها تما تجعله في في امرأته كل ما تنفق نفقة تريد بها وجه الله تعالى أبدا تؤجر بها ولو اللقمة التي تضعها في فم امرأتك نعم اللقمة التي تعطيها والطعام تعطيها لزوجتك هذا فيه أجر إذا نويت لذلك أنك تقوم بالواجب وأنك تساعد هذه المرأة على طاعة الله تعالى هذه عبادة لا. وفي الحديث الآخر وفي بطع أحدكم صدقة في ذهابه إلى زوجته صدقة قالوا يا رسول الله أيتي أحدنا شهوته هو لو فيها صدقة قال أرأيتم لو جعلها في الحرام لو جعلها في الحرام بالعكس سيكون فيها إذن كذلك إذا كانت نيته أن يحفظ نفسه ويحفظها المرأة من النار فله فيها صدقة وهذا في النية. So for example in this uh, in this intention 
the person who uh, marries and is taking care of his wife for the sake of Allah with all those intentions he's getting the reward of an absolute perfect act of, act of worship the person is for example uh, feeding his wife for uh, the hadith mentions if you have this kind of correct intention for every bite that you feed your wife and your children you will get the reward of sadaqa charity and uh, you're also fulfilling a wajib you're getting reward for fulfilling an act of responsibility that Allah's put in you taking care of your family so by taking care of them